Welcome everybody. My name is Jamie Cook from the Trimble Owner and Public Sector. And I'm here with Wendy Nation from Bay Care Health System and Jason Reitman from HNTB. And we're going to speak with you 10 ways that e-builder integrations can maximize the return on your e-builder investment. A couple of housekeeping things before we get started. If the session is being recorded, and we are taking questions at the end of the session. So if you have questions as we're going, if you could please put them in the questions panel on the right-hand side of your screen, and we will go through those questions at the end. And now I'm gonna jump in. So maximizing your e-builder return on investment. Many of you are familiar with the fact that owners use e-builder integrations to do financial integrations, integrating with their financial systems, their ERPs, that's Arguably, in fact, that is the most common way that people use integrations with eBuilder. But I want everybody to be aware that we have many owners that integrate with a range of systems beyond financial. And I just wanted you to get a feel for the options that are available that are far beyond financial for you to exchange data with eBuilder. Let's talk about the actual benefits. First benefit of integrations reducing overhead costs. So the most common way that costs are reduced is you're getting rid of paper forms and spreadsheets and all the work around managing those, filling those in, handing them around to people. In addition, you're stopping the need for people to have to rekey information, copy things between forms and spreadsheets and screens. You're reducing the manual communication and tracking that people have to do when they use these paper forms or they use systems that are not integrated. You're minimizing the number of people who are needed to complete each transaction. And when we talk about reducing overhead costs, there is a magnitude benefit here. As an example, at Northeastern, when they instituted e-builder integrations, they saved 95 days of an FTE simply by having those integrations. The second benefit from integrating is an increase in quality. And when we talk about using systems to validate data, there's actually three different levels of validation that are available. The first is you actually can set it up to confirm the data as it's entered into the source system. The second is you can do bulk validations in the data exchange during the integration itself. And then you can actually validate the data in the receiving system as well. So you have three opportunities to ensure that the data is correct. On top of that, we talked before about the potential for human rekeying. It's not just a time savings opportunity, the potential for human error when people handcraft um, the data. The third benefit, reducing processing time. And this is really important. You're taking out the manual tasks and the delays. You're eliminating people to people transfers and dependency on people. You're able to process transactions in bulk. This isn't one invoice form at a time. This is hundreds and thousands. You're getting the results faster. Payment approvals come faster. Funding release comes faster. And as one example, Innova Healthcare, when they integrated eBuilder with Lawson, they reduced their payment cycle by 20 days. Before the integrations, it was 29 days. After the integrations, it was nine days. And that's every single time they paid an invoice and the payments multiplied in magnitude for the savings of days and time. The fourth integrations benefit automating tracking. So you can automate monitoring the transactions, reporting on errors or exceptions that occur, getting status updates. And most importantly, if there are issues, it gives you the opportunity to be aware of those issues and to address them far more quickly than if it was in a pile of forms that hadn't been processed yet. The fifth benefit is that it keeps data synchronized. So you can have real-time updates in your systems on project details and status, on financials, 
GIS information, geographic information. And what that means is that the systems become reliable sources of truth. And I'm going to paraphrase our connected construction show. There was a great quote. Basically, what was said was, if you don't give people systems that give them the source of truth, you become the source of truth. And that's not a role that anybody wants to be in. It's very time consuming. The benefit of all this is that not just eBuilder users, any system that eBuilder integrates with has the opportunity for every user in those systems to get the same current information. It's an impact across your organization. And all of this, you're reducing the organizational risk of people acting on old or incorrect information. Benefit number six, users can stay in their preferred system. So we're talking about the primary system that they use, giving them the full picture of what they need to know. Because of that, they don't need to be switching between systems and arguably systems that they're not even familiar with how to use. They don't need to be interrupting other people or waiting for other people to get the most current information. It's available to them in their primary system, their preferred system. And in the case of eBuilder, that empowers the eBuilder users to have the most accurate, the most current, and the most comprehensive data available every time they use eBuilder. Benefit number seven, the ability to complete end-to-end -end transactions. By combining automated workflows in eBuilder and the integrations, that's where you maximize results. So you can ensure the processes are not in a holding pattern, either waiting for people to be available or let's be honest, for it to be the highest thing on their priority list, or it's not action because there was missing information, incorrect information, but you weren't aware of that and couldn't action it because nobody had told you. Integrations bring that to the forefront and allow you to fix it up so things are not in a holding pattern. And, and therefore, you can identify and address delays without letting them linger. As an example, John Muir Health used our integrations, change orders from three different companies, three different locations, approved in 35 minutes. These are real customers, real examples of what integrations can enable you to get work done in record times. Benefit number eight, accurately measuring your project health. So because you can access all the most current information from multiple sources in the same place, you get a comprehensive multi-dimensional view of your project health. It isn't simply the status. It's the status, it's the financials, it's the vendor information. It's everything you need to know in one view. And that gives you the power to really understand what's happening with your projects. You can identify and address risks more easily when all this information is together. And you have multifaceted information so you understand the implications more than just the one view. And because of that, you can now have project health information available not only to eBuilder users, any stakeholders who have access to the information that you share. Benefit number nine, the nature of integrations means you are going to be working with other departments. You're increasing collaboration with key stakeholders. That enables you to align the work and information across departments more easily, identify opportunities for streamlining your work, and proactively resolve issues together. They impact both of you. You're now working jointly on them as opposed to two systems and two departments that don't interact with each other. Because of that, you can work together if the systems have to be updated. So Wendy's going to talk about an upgrade that they did with their financial systems and they wanted their e-builder integrations to keep on working. If there's organizational changes and that impacts the systems or how they work, if there's process enhancements over time, all of that can be done together so that it has minimal impact and minimal delays for the users. Benefit number 10, increasing the quality in the systems that you integrate with. 
And I want to thank Jason because he actually was the one who hinted at this. And when we explored more, gave me much more information about the fact that his integrations actually led to finding inconsistencies in their financial system. So the integration design itself is an opportunity when you start to look at how you map the fields and the values, seeing where there might be disconnects, where the actual processes themselves might not behave consistently across the systems, where the validation rules might not be the same. And in the ongoing use of integrations, you actually get the opportunity to have continuous quality control. If there are problems in the data in the systems, they'll pick out as exceptions. And you can actually handle them and address not only that transaction, but address the underlying issue in the system to stop it from happening again. So I want to just go back to what I said before, a real quick reminder. We're not just talking about financial integrations. We're talking about integrations of all of these data types and more. There is a lot of opportunity to bring together all the data that impacts your program and your projects. And I also want to clarify what these integrations involve. So you can set up people's integrations to go in one direction if you want, or bi-directional sharing in both directions between the systems. We have customers who the financial management system is their absolute source of truth, cannot be changed by any other system. And in that case, all they wanted was a single direction for their financial data, most current data to go into eBuilder. In many other cases, we have bi-directional. We send them invoices for approval. They send back invoice approval status. Where we're talking about integrating, it can be an example like I just gave a process itself where each time the process completes, it goes into an integration into another system. You can also do bulk data transfers. Here are all the newly approved vendors. Let's get them between the systems. And when you're doing processes, you can actually submit supporting documents. Here is an invoice. Here's the evidence to support my approval. In addition, you can actually have a strategic subset of data exchange. I only want to send contracts that have been approved in the past seven days or contracts that have been approved over this particular value. You can put that logic in place. In addition, you have control over when the integrations happen. You can have the timing, the frequency, even the triggers. Every time an invoice is approved, I want it to be sent over to financial systems so it can be paid. I'm going to jump in right now to some questions of Wendy and Jason. And then we'll have an opportunity to answer your questions. So, Jason, if you don't mind, I'd like to start with you. Can you talk generally about your role and the benefits that you found from using eBuilder integrations? Yeah, sure. So my role is, you know, from the consulting side, uh, not the owner side, but I deal with all the users. And their biggest benefit, I think, from integration is the point you touched on earlier was being able to have a single system that has all the information they need. Instead of going to the ERP system, they can go to eBuilder, they find all of their stuff. Uh, that's, that was the biggest headache for us because some users didn't have access to the ERP system. Uh, some users weren't allowed access to the ERP system, so you couldn't even get them in there. But you know, being able to have that single system, single source, they go to it, they find all the stuff they need, because they know how to use and build. They know, you know how to navigate, they know where to go to find costs, they know where to go to find documents, um, and then having everything kind of feed there, um, you know, help them out a ton. And you know, probably the biggest benefit is the real-time information. So knowing if, their projects are fully encumbered, if they need contracts, they need more encumbered dollars, if they have change orders and budget changes coming through, you know, what the status of those are, where they're at. Because they can't see that in the ERP system, but they can see it in eBuilder. The process is feed it, it comes through. Um, yeah, so for those users, that was probably the biggest benefit. That's fantastic. Thank you, Jason. Wendy, I'll ask you the same question. In general, how have you built integrations helped you and your organization? So 
Um, at Bay Care, we we've seen a lot of change. We uh, went live with eBuilder in 2011, so it was a little while ago, and I didn't start um, as the administrator until 2015. So I wasn't with Bay Care when they started at all, but um, I can tell you that when I came on in 2015, I still knew project managers who were keeping spreadsheets and trying to do things with paper. And we had to get them off of that and say, hey, you know, we have these integrations, they work. You know, you can trust them, it's okay. So, um, so, there, was a, so there was a little bit of a lag, but we have finally gotten everyone on the same page and it has really helped us as an organization to decrease the redundancy of what people were doing with you know entering it in one place and a spreadsheet and this and that so it has helped decrease that and then increase their bandwidth so that they can manage more projects or handle more um more higher level information because they um they trust the integrations so um we we have an integration between the eBuilder and our ERP system, but we also have e the integration of eBuilder to our document management system. So we we enter the process in eBuilder and we attach the document to that process. And then with the integration, it sends the information to the ERP system as well as the document to our document management system. I know of, uh, I have a friend who also works with eBuilder and she is currently going through and finding instances with, within eBuilder that don't have documents and having to match things up and scan things in and index it all. And, and it's almost a full-time job. And so since we do that, when we enter the purchase order and we enter the invoice into eBuilder, then those documents go right on over, everything gets indexed, we can find everything very easily. We don't have to go back and, you know, have a full-time person indexing and and stuff like that. So so it has it has helped a lot with the redundancy and and it has opened us up so we can we can handle more, you know, in, increase our project budget, our capital budget, work on more more things because we're not busy, you know, with all the ad administrative type tasks. That's fantastic. Thanks, Wendy. Um, I mentioned before that one of the huge benefits of integrations is quality control. And can you give me an example of something that you've been able to identify and address a quality issue because of your integrations? Yeah, it was um, most most of the quality that we we saw was between the nice paper routing slips that everybody loves going to the wrong place or sent to the wrong mail stop and and it taking 10 times longer to get something approved um and we you know we were able to throw all that in eBuilder but the, you know and that's just a general eBuilder process but with the integration you know, everything was there in one place and we were able to streamline that process and get a, get our vendors paid quicker and POs issued faster. But it also, with the integrations that allowed us with the, like the error reports or the exception reports we get with the integrations, we are able to identify like when a vendor's inactive and, you know, when there is a problem with something that's set up. So the integrations help identify those a lot faster so we can address them and, you know, still, you know, work efficiently. That's fantastic. And Jason, I'll ask you the same question. Have you been able to identify any specific examples of quality issues that you were able to identify because of your eBuilder integrations? Yeah, you mentioned that earlier. It, it's, it, it's crazy to see, you think your system's rock solid and then all of a sudden when you're integrated with something else and you see it just kind of highlights everything that's not correct. So the biggest thing with the ERP integration is what Wendy said, the exceptions. So we get those exceptions daily, um, going through those lists and see what's there, why it's there, why it 
had an exception error reviewing it with the finance team. Um, and so we originally were meeting with finance on a weekly basis, giving them a rundown. Hey, these are the amount of exceptions that you had. These are the amount of exceptions that we resolved. Here's some outstanding ones. Uh, and here's our recommendations for you guys to change something in the future, because they're the ones that are entering this, the information into the ERP. And our integration, unlike Wendy's, it's just single. So ERP feeds into eBuilder, so we only have that single source. So having them be able to modify and change that information coming in and identifying the issues coming in helped us in the end to reduce the exceptions and the errors that we were getting from, you know, from eBuilder. Um, and I think that that part of it helps quality control any builder builds trust in the data, builds trust for the users to understand that, you know, that data is accurate and correct, but then also helps the finance team to fix any issues or errors that they may not have known that existed when, you know, how they're doing their current processes and current work in their ERP system. That's fantastic, Jason. Thank you for that. All right, so we're getting, I'm, I'm having a look and there are a few audience questions coming in. Um, Deming, if you wouldn't mind, and if audience, if you don't mind, we have a couple of poll questions we'd like to ask you, and then we're going to go into the audience questions. So, Domingo, do you want to give them instructions or uh, yep. answer so, the poll questions? Um, we just launched the first poll question, so you guys can go ahead and put your answer choices in. We're going to be... Um, Give it a couple of seconds um, before we go and close it out. So if you want to go ahead and put in your answers, that would be great. Um, the first poll question is, which integration types would you consider for improving your capital improvement programs? So it looks like people are saying asset management, data warehouse, but mainly asset management. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I've definitely heard that has been very popular recently in all the different <laughs> webinars I've joined and sessions I've joined. It's asset management for sure. Yeah, 85%. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and close that one, and I'm going to launch the second question. Um, what are the most important benefits that you would you want to get from your eBuilder integrations? So same thing, guys. Go ahead and put in your answers. I'm going to give it a couple seconds before I close the poll. All right. Reduce your overhead cost. Probably going to be the overhead cost, I'm sure, because everybody wants to reduce costs, right? Yep. <laughs> and processing time. I think those two are the, yeah. the two biggest drivers. Yeah. Um, it looks like substantially increase your team's efficiency. It's coming. It's now taking the lead, actually. Yeah, it seems that that one um, seems to be the winner at 78%. Um, substantially increase your team's efficiency. And then the second one is improve the quality and accuracy of your work. So I'm going to go ahead and close that one. Fantastic. Thank you for that. No problem. Do you want to do the third one too, Jamie? Uh, we'll do that after the, the audience questions, if that's all okay, right. Okay, perfect. That works. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course. Okay, so the first question coming in, um, and I'm going to direct it, to Wendy, to you first, if you don't mind. Can you tell us how your integrations help you with ongoing quality control? Ongoing quality control. Okay, so we are always looking for ways to come in uh, under budget, under time, you know, just like everybody. And so what we what we found was that we needed to upgrade our ERP system like you talked about um, before. And in that process, we are able to update our, our eBuilder integrations it's it's going to help us with the increased security that we need and of course updated technology but we're also able to map new fields and comments and different things that we have found that were missing 11 years ago when we first integrated so the quality control you know it just it's going to just 
upgrading the ERP system and that big change for our organization is going is allowing us to update our eBuilder integrations and get us, you know, more in line with, you know, current standards, current, you know, ways of doing things. And and so that's probably our biggest thing um, that we're looking to get out of our new integration. Fantastic. And Jason, I'll ask you to answer the same question. Ongoing quality control. Yeah, probably just to add on to Wendy and, and getting more details from the ERP system. For for us, it it's very hard to go back to the ERP system folks and say, hey, we need this field map now, or hey, can you put this field on all these reports? Uh, they can't easily do that because of other issues. But uh, there, so there's things that we kind of have priorities of that we you know really really need that we maybe missed we didn't think about when we first got the integration and we first you know started getting data in um, and there's transactions that we may miss you know why did we miss a transaction well it was because of this well we're not integrated for this part of it we didn't anticipate these transactions coming over so you know it's it, like I mentioned earlier the exceptions tell us exactly kind of what we're missing. And that helps us to just continually get better and better and reduce our exception rate down to, I think now it's about 24%, 23% out of hundreds of transactions that come through. So it's, um, it's definitely helped us a lot. Okay. Um, we're getting a compounded question and I, I will ask each of you to answer it as quickly as you can, because this could be 10 minutes answer by itself. Um, Jason, I'll start with you. How long have you had these integrations that you're talking about, um, particularly for your primary client? So uh, I've been there supporting our client for five years, and they had the integrations now for four years. And are they using Boomi, or are they using um, the API, public API? What is the transfer mechanism? Uh, so currently, it's with um, Dell Boomi, the ERP system writes reports through Dell Boomi and delivers um, reports to a, an FTP site where eBuilder is set up with a scheduled tasks to run, find those reports, import them in through the processes on a daily okay. basis. And I'm getting a couple of questions about time and overhead. I'm gonna talk to that after. Wendy, I'm gonna ask you the same question, please. Um, you mentioned that the integrations were in place when you started at Baycare, but how long have you been working with the integrations? They've been around you said 2011, is that correct? Right, yeah, they set them up immediately. Like when we went live, we were live. There was um, there was one for the change orders to the POs that was, I think, uh, the following year, but they have been in place for a while. And that, um, speaking to, you know, the upgrade, right now, like with Jason, we use the scheduled tasks and it sends a file through, you know, through the web if you want to say to the erp system and the erp system sends information back to ebuilder and that's all done through the scheduled tasks you know um put and you know call folders get input folders and we are moving on to using the api the app exchange and going through dell boomi um that's part of our upgrade because it has in the increased security that we, yep. we need. Yep, that's fantastic. Thank you for that. I'm seeing a few questions, nuanced questions around how long does this take? How long does it take to implement? How long does it take to maintain it? I'm going to let people know. So we actually have a session that's scheduled at our Dimensions Conference. That's November 7th through 9th. And it's gonna be held at the Venetian in Las Vegas. And Wendy and Jason and I are actually gonna be talking to you everything about integration delivery. Um, from what's involved to who needs to be involved to how much time it might take and realizing guys with everything integration timing is contingent upon what systems you have the level of complexity integrations the people who are involved in the process and their availability so there is no one answer but the thing I'm going to ask you to do um, is if you have further questions either specifically about the systems you are considering integrating with or the amount of time it will take or based on the scope of what you want to do. 
this is a great time to reach out to your account manager or your customer success manager, have that conversation. They can help you pinpoint much more realistically for you what it's going to take, what's involved, um, how much time might be needed. That kind of discussion is much better with real examples than trying to give you, you know, rent orders of magnitude that are just guesstimates without your specific needs. So Jason and Wendy and I will be talking about this more dimensions, what's actually involved with integrations. And I encourage you, if you have any questions about your specific needs, talk to your account manager, talk to your customer success manager. They can help you. If you don't have a current account with eBuilder, you can send an email to info at ebuilder.net and we will find somebody to help you. And Domingo, I believe there's one more poll question. If you guys don't mind answering that one more question before you go, I want to thank Jason and Wendy very much for your time and thank the audience for your patience and listening to all of this. Um, any questions that we have not answered will be answered at Dimensions or we will answer you individually. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Appreciate it. Thanks for time. Thank you. And Domingo, do you want to post the one more question, please? Yep, I just went ahead and launched it. Um, so Thank I'm just going to give it a second. It looks like people are answering. Um, so I'll give it a couple of seconds and then we can go ahead and end the webinar. Thanks, Domingo. No problem. So it looks like people would like us to walk, um, walk me through the integration delivery process. Seems to be the most popular answer. And that is Dimensions. That's exactly what Jason and Wendy and I are going to be doing at Dimensions. Perfect. All right. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and close that poll question. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Dominga. This is great. And thank you, everybody who contributed with your questions and your responses to the polls. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome.